Okay, um, now we've got the product and the quotient rules. All right, and so I'll talk about the product rule here, and then we'll discuss uh, why we even need it. Um, so I kind of um, uh, read it the way the first way is here. If I've got the derivative of two functions multiplied together, the, the derivative is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. There's a cool proof of this. I don't think we're going to go, uh, uh, dive into the proof, but uh, it's really, really cool, uh, and it uses the limit definition. Uh, but then sometimes you'll see it this way, uh, f prime times g plus f times g prime. Sometimes uh, uh, people will write it that way. And so you'll see it that way on a lot of things, but I always go with the first one because that's, that's how, the way I learned it. All right, so what I wanted to show you was, why do we even need this? Because like if you thought that the derivative was just going to be, okay, the derivative of the first times the derivative of the second, then this derivative would be 2. Well, you know it can't be 2. This is a quadratic, right? And so if we actually did the FOIL method, and uh, so I just want to kind of show you that it works. Uh, so if I did FOIL method, I've got 2x squared. And by the way, we're going to do the product rule, but because uh, there's some things you can't multiply together. But uh, so this is negative eight, and my, so minus nine x. Uh, uh, sorry, nine x. Uh, boom. So nine x uh, plus four, right? So if I took the derivative of that, uh, so if I went f prime and I just did power rule, so f prime of x would be. Uh, 4x minus 9, right? Now, but however, um, if we follow the, the actual product rule, all right, so we know that's the answer. If we follow the product rule, then f prime of x should equal, and I'll write it out the long way this first time. The first, I always go with the first. So 2x minus 1 times the derivative of the second. plus, oops, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay, so let's actually do this. Uh, so it's going to be uh, 2x minus 1 times the derivative of the first, which is 1, that derivative of the, uh, of the second, sorry, derivative of the second is 1, plus and then I've got x minus 4, and the derivative of the first then is 2. All right, and so here we go. So if I distribute, well, that's just 2x minus 1, of course. And this is uh, 2x minus 8. And combining like terms, equal, equal. Uh, gives you 4x minus 9. Now you're like, why would I do all that when I could just do it this way? Well, you're about to see, because there's going to be some things you can't multiply together. There we go. Some things you you wouldn't want to multiply together, <laughs> and so on and so forth. All right, so uh, so there we go. So now, so this time, and I kind of like using the writing the rule. Now I know I could, again, multiply everything by everything, get all those together, and it would be just fine. But I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to do the product rule, which is, the first, x squared plus 3x minus 1 times the derivative of the second. We'll do that in a second. I mean, you could, instead of writing this rule down, the rule down as you go, you could actually just go ahead and do it, and that would be fine. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it out every time. Uh, plus the second, not every time, just here at the beginning. I'm going to run out of room. And the derivative of the first, I'm going to go off the page. Okay, so if I was doing this for real, like, I mean, they, and I was asked to do the product rule, then I would have said, uh, I would have said x squared plus 3x minus 1. And then the derivative of the second, I would just gone for, call it 4x. That's what it is. And then plus the second, which is 2x minus 5. And then the derivative of the first, which is a little bit more complicated, it is 2x plus 3. Okay. All right. And so these two multiplied together would give you 4x cubed plus 12x squared 
minus 4x. And then these two multiply together. Uh, let's change colors. All right, so this purple right here would be uh, 4x cubed. All right, the outside is 6x squared. We'll combine that with uh, the other side in a minute. Uh, inside is negative 10x and then a minus 15. Okay, so combining like terms, we have 8x cubed. Uh, what is that, 18x squares? 18x squares. <laughs> and then negative 14x minus 15. Now, so far, we've not uh, done one that required the product rule. Uh, we could have multiplied those things together, combined like terms, or not even combined like terms, and then take the derivative of individual terms. We could have done that, and we would have gotten this answer. I just didn't have room to show that. I did here on this one I did because that was pretty quick and easy, but, uh, but it works. Now, um, so on, on C then, I'm going to think of it as 2 sine x is the first, and then the cosine x as the second. All right, those are the two things that are multiplied together. All right, and so y prime or dy dx, I'll call it dy dx this time. dy dx will equal the first, 2 sine x, times the derivative of the second. All right, plus the second. times the derivative of the first. Okay, all right, and so here we go. All right, so uh, that will be, and again, you could just start off this way and it'd be perfectly fine. So I have two sine x, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine x, Okay, plus cosine x, and the derivative of 2 sine x is constant multiple 2 cosine x. Okay, so what could we do? Well, um, it almost feels like a Pythagorean theorem, but not quite. I mean, there's some, there's some uh, identity stuff I could do. Uh, if, that was, if that was positive and I had a sine squared and a cosine squared, I would call that one, uh, but... Since one of them is negative, I'm not going to make a whole lot of changes. I'm just going to leave it like it is. All right, there's no sense. You just kind of can go in circles on that kind of thing. So I've got two sine, and the notation for a squaring sine, short, shortcut notation is this, all right, and plus a two cosine squared x. Now you could, of course, you know, factor and stuff like that, but I bet you Gene leaves it just like that. Okay, there we go. Okay, this next one. G prime is the first. So 3 e to the x minus x squared times the derivative with respect to x. x is your variable of x cubed minus 1. Okay. Plus, I'm going to run out of room there, so I'm just going to go ahead and move on down to the next line. The second, x cubed minus 1. And the derivative of the first. Now, again, we've not proven this, and there's a really cool proof in your book. There's really cool proofs that can be found, but you don't have to do them. Hey, what's up? We got a guest star. It's Mr. Toulier. He's, he's handing out candy. Oh, he really is. All right. <laughs> For being the big loser today. Oh, I'm the big <laughs> loser. Thank you. Hey, wait a second. These are all left Twixes. <laughs> Don't have any right. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, man. <laughs> all right, minus x squared. All right. Okay, so here we go. So this time we're actually going to do it. And then, you know, and oftentimes people will just go straight into the derivative. So, so here we go. So here's the first. I'm going to say the same thing that we just wrote down, but I'm going to actually do it. Times the derivative of the second. The derivative of the second is 3x squared, power rule. 
We'll distribute that in a second and see what happens. Plus the second. And the derivative of the first, which uh, derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So it's just going to be 3e to the x. It doesn't change. But this does. The derivative of x squared is 2x. Okay, so a little uh, color coding here. That derivative is here. That derivative is there. And then the minus one, I didn't say anything about that, but the minus one is zero. All right, so, all right, so now that we're here, let's, uh, let's multiply and see if we can combine some like terms. Who knows? All right, so uh, distributing here, I've got nine uh, e to the x, x squared. I'll just put them in that order. It's kind of weird. Okay, minus 3x to the fourth. All right, plus, and distributing here is a FOIL method. So I've got a 3 e to the x, uh, x cubed. All right, so that's not a like term with anything we have so far. So 3 e to the x, x cubed is first. Outside is negative 2x to the fourth. Okay, so I can combine a little bit there. All right. Inside is negative 3e to the x. I don't have another one of those anywhere. And then the last is a 2x. And I don't have another one of those anywhere. So the only like terms, the only like terms, it turns out, are these x to the fourths. So gross, but that's okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and bring them all together. So I've got 9 e to the x, x squared minus 3, no, 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 sorry, minus 5 x to the fourth. And then the rest just comes down. So 3e to the x, x cubed, which is not like anything else that we've had, uh, minus 3e to the x, and then plus a little 2x right there. Woohoo! All right. Uh, okay, we're done with that one. Gross. All right, that, that one's nasty. But let's look at their little note here. Since multiplication and addition are both commutative, the product rule is hard to mix up unless you misunderstand the rules. It's easy just to take turns on the factors. One derivative at a time for each term. I love that. One derivative at each time. So, so we have this addition in between them, each of these. And uh, so what she's saying is there was one derivative at a time one derivative at a time. And as long as you do that, you'll be in good shape. I love that. And then do not think ever that this is the two the derivatives multiply together. That is not a calculus thing at all. Okay, example one.